Hello, everyone, and welcome to the semifinal edition, the first semifinal edition of the EULCS post game lobby of the season, where I'm joined by the Fischio after a 3 1 series between G2 and Splice. We'll have Yanko and Perks joining us in just a bit, but that gives us time to talk about the match. Now, uh, for me, the fact that Perks wasn't in the player of the game voting, even, is what tells the story of the series and of G2 for me, because Yarnan. I had not expected him to step up that much, and I had not expected him to step up that much that perks would not be as necessary to G2 success overall. That's a great plus for them. Yeah, it was a good thing. Uh, from talking to perks also, like previously in the week, they mentioned a lot how they wanted to integrate the bot lane a lot more. They knew they needed a bot lane to do well if they actually want to win the entire split, because one thing is beating Splice. That's probably going to be maybe an even stronger team sitting waiting for you in the final. So you need Yarnan to perform at a high level, and I think he did today. I think actually in a lot of cases, uh, I would say lane for lane, G2 looked better than Splice. Uh, and that's a lot of credit to the bottom lane there as well, because we were not expecting a lot from them. Well, that's where I want to jump in. G2 now makes their fifth consecutive final as an organization. But did they look good enough to have a competitive chance in that final? It seems that today, with those upgrades in Hyarnan's play specifically, they look pretty nice. Uh, I think pretty they, good. Yeah, <laughs> I think they did. They also look pretty. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think game one was the only really shaky game uh, between the teams where it was very clear they had to get used to, you know, the semi-final. I think game two looked good from, from, from G2. I think this last game here as well, uh, Wonder grabs Fiora top lane against Shen Kimil. So I was like, ooh, that's pretty risky. Mm -hmm. Could be the enemy jungler camps him, but then nothing really happens from Zersa. He just kind of farms Did it catch you delays. off guard, the fact that Splice did not fight back? At, maybe at all, even after that first game? I think even though Splice shown showed us better early games in the second half of the regular season, it wasn't due to insane action they did that. They just ended up like not really falling behind to ganks or anything. And then they would just play around like turrets. And then we get goal leads against most teams in Europe. It wasn't pure ganking except on Zac. Mm -hmm. And Zac was banned every, every single, single game, game this series. And it really hurt Zersei's early impact, which I think made it a lot easier for Perks and, and Wonder to just avoid ever really getting ganked and fall behind in lanes because we had a lot of zero zero zeros for these guys and just a ton of CS. Yeah, great draft choices from the side of G2. We'll talk a bit more about that with Yankos and Perks later. But first, for more on their win, we have Quickshot, who's also standing by with two other players of Europe's newest finalists. Thank you very much. I am joined, of course, by Wonder and Wadid. First and foremost, congratulations on making it to finals. Thank you. I have to ask, Wadid, when you sat down, you were still shaking and, and hugs and, and high fives, and you said, I don't know what to think, I don't know what to feel. Talk me through what, what you were thinking and feeling as you killed that final nexus. Uh, uh, I really don't know. Like, everything is new. Uh, last year, I was in Rocket, uh, a bit close to making a playoff, but we got playoff by, like, it was so easy for us. And then, right now, we got the finals. Uh, it's finals, right? But I don't know how to like express my, my emotions right now because it's my first time anyway, so. We're gonna figure out how to express those emotions in a little bit. For one, it's not your first finals, but it's your first finals in a while. How important is it to get there? And also, how does it feel to know you knocked Kobe out? Well, making finals, of course, feels really great. Uh, as you said, I made it 2016 summer, so. That's quite a while since then, now that we're in 2018, so um, feels really good. Knocking out Kobe, on the other hand, even though there was a lot of banter pre-game and stuff like that, of course it never feels great. I, I get along really well with Kobe and pretty much everyone, like everyone actually on my old team, my ex-teammates, so knocking out someone and like, because he, he wants this really bad too, so that, that of course doesn't feel like as great. Of but course, it's necessary. It is necessary, especially if you want to win. That's how it works. Wanda, you talked about former teammates. What about new teammates? What about pressure for G2? This organization has never missed an EU LCS final. And thanks to you and what did and the rest of the guys, they continue not to miss it. Well, personally, I understand that there is pressure following joining a team that have won four uh, consecutive titles where I haven't won any in my career yet. So. I understand that there's pressure, especially from the community, but I feel like I'm pretty good personally at handling like pressure and not letting it get to me. And I think that my my aspiration, my kind of uh, goals as well for myself is further than winning EU or like it is winning EU, but so it, you're we're aiming kinda, higher than that. We're kind of aligning in our goals here, and I think that's like what matters in the end. So I'm not I'm not feeling that pressured myself by it. 
I'm really happy to hear that. I'm excited to see how you're going to perform in Denmark, of course. Uh, you talked about personal goals. And I have uh, uh, one of my favorite tweets that I read from Wadid uh, last year, in fact. You said something along the lines of, I don't just want to be another random Korean playing in a foreign league. You want to make a name for yourself in EU LCS. Do you yeah. feel like you're doing that now? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, I'm just making my image to like just funny ways, like dabbing on stage or something. There's just people, oh, what did? Oh, that guy just uh, dabbed on the stage. Haha, <laughs> funny guy, but not the way that our, I'm willing to. Like, he's a really good support. He's making some play. He's a playmaker. But right now, I'm just like funny guy, like comedian. I don't want to that be the comedian on stage, right? Like, I'm here for performing really well other than uh, like other supports. Like I'm here, like Korean support right now. I'm only like being in a playoff. So yeah, I just want to show off your skills. Yeah, I, I You've, made You've made it to finals. You've made it to finals, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if I rewatch my inting, yeah, yeah, maybe I can be like, oh my God, uh, actually in the finals, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And it's always the competitors that are very critical, even after a win, that seem to improve. I, I want to congratulate you one more. And just before we head to PGL, uh, I have to say, Wanda, you're playing in front of a Danish crowd. You're in the finals again in Denmark. Could I ask you to give a shout out to your Danish fans in Danish ahead of the finals next week? Of course, yeah. Um... Jeg håber, I alle sammen kommer og supporter os, når vi spiller på scenen. Mig, specielt danskerne, og, og bare mit team. Jeg glæder mig virkelig meget til at spille i foran alle jer, og så ja, ikke rigtig mere at sige. Congratulations. I know your family were here watching today. Thank you for coming to the show. Congratulations, Wanda. And we're dead. We will see you in Denmark for the finals. Thanks so much. Thank you. For now, back to Shucks and the Gang for PGL. Thank you very much. We're joined here by Jankos and Perks as well. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, Perks' fifth consecutive final with G2 Esports. Jankos, your first EU LCS final. I can imagine you're both pretty happy. Who's the happiest out of you both? Uh, probably him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like more relieved nah, now that I'm there. Come on, I, I, I act but like cool, when yeah. we see, when we won, like I saw tears in his eyes, and that was no, that, this is not true. that actually ah, made me so. I like, think I saw uh, it too. Yeah, 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 yeah so I definitely happy. saw that. And uh, I'm just really happy. Yeah. So you're more happy, happy for, for your other team I'm members. I'm happy for my teammates because they are all so good and they all deserve it. And we worked so hard to split, and we stressed out so much, and we all wanted to like be here and get to the final. And now that we did it. It makes me really happy in particular. Actually, I will use that moment to appreciate Hjarna as well, since he's not actually making any interviews, it seems like, because we are here and uh, wonder and what we were doing the previous interview. I got you covered. He is the player of the series. Yeah, that, so that's good. That's good, because I think he gets a lot of hate um, from, from just fans, I guess. But I feel he's really trying to improve. And today, I felt like he played really well. So I'm yep. happy with that, you know? Yeah, let's um, let's make it official. Hjarna is our player of the series. That's what the people apparently on the internet and the viewers share your opinion and I think for me I was just talking about it with the Fisho I was very surprised that throughout the series out of all the lanes we talked about Jito's bottom lane really outclassed Splice's bottom lane and for me that was quite a big surprise and of course there's a lot of the team effort around it but a lot of that can be attributed to Yarnit. I think he played really well. I love his gen, uh, first of all, which he got two of the games. So that was super good. I think Splice didn't really know what to play bot lane. It was really all over the place mm -hmm. with their kind of uh, 2v2 lane. So G2 had a clear game plan. Tom Kens, there was a Thresh as well coming in, which he played super well in that game three. So overall, I think both guys uh, performed. I think Yana was the standout. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we did, did fine, but I think Yana was definitely the one who, who did the best. Is it nice for you to know, Perks, that when we're talking about G2, we often talk about Perks and Perks and the rest of his team and Perks and Wonder. But in this game, it seemed that you very much did your job. But it was much more team effort, I think, than I've seen throughout most of the split. Is that fair? <clears throat> yeah, that just makes me really happy. It relieves so much pressure from my shoulder in terms of like me needing to step up or do like force every fight. But now this series, like my team was forcing so many fights and I could just be like, calm guy, I mm -hmm. guess, like kind of, and I would like make some mistakes here and there. I played fine, but I could play a little better, I think. 
but it just makes me really happy that my team is like so good right now. Well, and Jankos, you definitely were a big part of that, uh, often uh, getting the engages going for your team, getting the early game played out. And, and we were a bit surprised about how Xerxes did not have as good of early games as he had in the second half of the split. Where do you think, or why do you think it is that you were better than him in the series in the early game? Mm, I think, first of all, I feel like his champion pool was kind of targeted because we won one champion. Zach, I think he's by far the best on that champion. And then when it comes to other champs, I feel felt like his Ola was a little bit underwhelming. And then his Tran was really good, but not every game you can win with Tran. Mm -hmm. So I personally feel like Zerz is really good, but sometimes he should play more meta champs um, mm -hmm. as well. And then also, I think we just played better as a team. I, I didn't feel like any of us played much better like individually than his counterpart. I just felt like what we practiced, the whole split kind of paid off and we were communicating really well. We were talking, we were playing as five and also basically, yeah. I, I guess that's it. <laughs> that was it. As a team, they played better. And then it seems to me as we got kind of a, a taste of this matchup in the tiebreaker, but not that much change. G2 was also dominant in that, and G2 was also dominant in this best of five. So what does this mean for Splice? Is it just third place match now, and they just have to work on this project, but they weren't strong enough to make it to the finals? To me, it felt like they were just a weaker team today. It wasn't... I, I think there were some questionable decisions uh, on red side in some of the games where... They gave Swain, they didn't have an answer to Swain. Uh, they tried the Nar Olaf one, which I'm not sure if you guys understood that one specifically, but then they didn't actually even play around it. So one got another free game mm -hmm. uh, up top. Obviously wasn't the main, like the only reason they lost it, but I think they tried to do some things in pick and ban phase to play comfort. Also with Zillion uh, coming in in that second phase instead of getting a winning bot lane. So there just were some things that didn't seem to click for them as a team. Yep. It meant to me that they were the weaker of the two. So them going into the third place game is just, it's fair. It kind of uh, feels They fair, didn't yeah. deserve to win today. Uh, I, I at least can safely say that. And I think G2 looked in control three out of four games. Yeah, we'll see uh, how you guys do in the finals. Uh, throughout this PGL, I'm also going to switch in some shocks in statements. If you guys don't know what that is, it's some statements that we designed <coughs> that you guys might think are absolutely crazy or right on point, should be harsher. You let us know, all right? Okay. This is the first one. Wonder is the biggest carry on G2 Esports? Mm, I think that's fair to say. I mean, I think his performance, at least on stage, looks really well. And I think a lot of the times we play, we try to play around him. So I think he just overall plays well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, I agree. Like, there's not much to say. Like, he's the biggest carry because when he gets a carry champ, we expect him to carry and he usually does very well. So he is the carry. Do you think that you fully uh, went to that mindset of let's just always give him a carry as much as we can because we saw it being on and off in the first half of the split uh i'm not sure actually because we are still fine playing tanks but we actually think that also carry top is probably the best right now i'm sure that when we see lck tomorrow maybe we'll see all kinds of like playing around top and carry top stuff mm -hmm. and playing around bot is important as well that's why we got an advantage as well because of our draft mm -hmm. like enemy support didn't we knew that he will he could play melee supports, but he doesn't really prefer them. So that just gave us a huge advantage in draft. Like you, you guys have no idea how, how easy that made me feel like when I For draft. saw like Janna yeah. or Zillian or something. Like yeah. it made me really happy. So Do you agree with that? Is that was that also kind of splices? I mean that's what downfall? I talked about before where it felt like in the pick and ban phase they were kinda of handicapped in what they could do. They lost Zach, so that was the best champ in the jungle. Uh, and then with a lot of support picks. Like, I thought we were going to see more like Morgana essentially coming in in some of the games, uh, when I think it could have been picked with Morgana Caitlyn as an example. They didn't go for that, and then they swap it to more late game focused. So they don't actually have a winning lane, because they don't beat the Swain top. Niski's never going to beat Perks mid, and then the bot lane is drafting pure scaling. So it was one of the reasons also I felt like Serza maybe couldn't do as much as he normally wanted to, and Yankas had kind of free early games in some of them, and we just got Skana every single game. That does surprise me, because what that comes down to also for me is that like for a team of Splice, they did have a week to prepare, right? So I would have thought that they would be able to maybe creatively think around that. And when you see that Swain being given over so many times without answer, if you see that Zach being taken away and there really is no answer for Xerxes, someone who has been very inventive in the past as well, it just makes me wonder what that's about 
if, if there's no solutions that can be found in draft. But I, I mean, guess we. To be honest, though, I felt surprised when he picked Olaf, for example. Like, we did not expect him to pick up Olaf, and this is a champion he picked up. I just think that some of their bans were really questionable as well. So it's not only that their picks, you know, their support doesn't really play melee champs or their jungle can really perform well on a lot of the meta champions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we prepared way better. We had two weeks, right? So yeah. we prepared better and also I feel like we play be way better as a team. We yeah. kind of look like all G2 and not the G2 that people were, were expecting us to be, you know? What is all G2 and what is I mean, the I think G2 the old G2 is about? just Sven Mifi um, and Expect and all those like guys that were really insane last year and the year before that. I felt that they always played as a team and even though people could argue that they were the best individuals in Europe, it's it's also because how they played together, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now we are not actually trying to... Like some, some people could argue that I'm not the best jungle or Hiana is not the best AD or even Perks. You know, we have Caps mid laner, he's so insane. So, uh, <laughs> so that's why I feel like since we are playing well, way better as a team compared to Splice, for example, we just won. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool point and something that actually surprised me already week one of this split because when I saw Perks and Yankos <laughs> on a roster, I was like, great. This is like carry, super hardcore, like snowball picks mid, early game jungle from Yankos, and then you just destroy every mid lane, and then you have one on a carry top, and you just take over like snowball picks all the time. It became Sejuani every game, <laughs> and it became like scaling mid laner for perks, and we're like, hmm, okay, I guess this is gonna be slow G2. And they actually did try and play, and you talked a lot about this in interviews, you guys wanted to play like the correct way, and not just early snowball. And we've kind of seen that trend continue uh, for G2. It has backfired a few times when they were on the clock and they got outscaled. There are some matches, H2K, Fnatic, where they then, around a Baron or something, don't fully execute it, and then they get outscaled. But apart from that, it's actually been very successful. Uh, and Splice they definitely didn't have an answer. No, they didn't have an answer today. You talk a lot about the importance of early game, and I think that is something we're going to see tomorrow like crazy between Fnatic and Vitality, and I'd like Ooh. to kick off the discussion <laughs> about that semifinals you guys are strapped Ooh. in for with another statement. Uh, here it is. Buipo playing for Fnatic makes Vitality the favorites going into tomorrow. For people that are not up to date about the news, Soaz has injured his hand, cannot play. Buipo will be starting for all five possible games tomorrow in the semifinal. How does this up Vitality's chances, Yankos? I do believe that Vitality has really good early game. And from what they showed in scrims this week, we played both teams, Vitality and Fnatic. I feel like um, Vitality can maybe surprise us. I think that they play really solid. But if they don't get lead, they get lost on the map. And mm -hmm. that's what Fnatic will, in my opinion, abuse. Especially that, even though there is no SOAS, so we will not see, let's say, tank top lanes, because usually that's like dog champ for SOAS. <laughs> but we have Caps, Reckless, in the same team. The really good players. <laughs> and um, on top of it, there is Broxa Jungle and Sang. So I just think that they play smart, like kind of similar to us, but also they have a lot of star players that they can play around. So it's not like Soas had to carry or it's not like Bipo has to carry. He just needs to not get into the mindset where uh, he thinks that he needs to perform really well or something. So like basically, don't choke. You're, yeah, don't choke. Your TLDR is... Hillisong, Broxa, Wipo, don't choke. Let Caps and Reckless do the work. Do you guys agree? I mean, agree? my TLDR is uh, Reckless, Caps. It's reckless, Caps. <laughs> Hillisong, Broxa, Wipo, don't choke. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Perks, what do you think? Uh, I, I have a lot of information through my head right now. I heard from my jungler. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but with a statement, I, I kind of agree, but not fully. No, no. I, th no yeah. I think it's like, of course, it's an aggressive statement. So. <laughs> I think That's they're the not, game. They're, yeah, exactly. They're not the favorites, in my opinion, but they are. They have a very high chance of, of actually upsetting Fnatic because I would ex like, let's say, like two weeks ago, I would just say Fnatic would like three zero them, and they're the best team in Europe by far. But after screaming them more and after all the teams getting better, and Fnatic, I feel like Fnatic got much better. My, my, that's how I feel at least. Uh, I think that Vitality has a very high chance of actually taking the whole series, and it's gonna be yeah, like how Yanko said, like. Cups, reckless, so good carries. So like. if you say Vitality has a big chance of taking the series, uh, what lane are you thinking about that? I'm thinking more like Fnatic mid jungle will get so outperformed by Vitality mid jungle, and they will just snowball into the whole series being lost. As much as like I always praise Cups, I just think now that he's not playing to the best level that mm -hmm. he could be, and I think that with that Vitality mid jungle is playing really well around pressure, and I think that Vitality bottom is playing a little better than usual, and I think that. 
as much as I didn't really like Kao before, I think that he's playing really well with his team right now. That's how I feel this. And as much as they, I, like, I, like Angus, I feel a bit lost in the map, they're, off, if, they don't, if they don't get lead, if they do get lead, they are, Unstoppable. Pre they're pretty good. I mean, not, not unstoppable, but, but they're pretty, pretty good. Yeah. That's damning from the side of Perks. It he, sounds like yeah. they're favorites based on what you're saying. You yeah. say every I mean, single late. I guess, I guess, kind of, yeah. I okay. mean, I guess, I, I mean, usually it's like Fnatic doesn't lose both and doesn't lose mid, but against Vitality, both times they played, oh, yeah. yep. they actually lost those lanes, and it just makes me think that the, the Vitality is like the best matchup against Fnatic, right? I still think, in my opinion, if Fnatic plays well, they are the favorites, right? But if Vitality Plays well, maybe they're the favorites. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> a lot of information here, a lot of things being thrown around, obviously, from scrims as well, which I can't base my thing on. But one thing I can say is I have now, for basically four years of casting EU LCS, heard about scrim teams who are so good at playing early game in scrims and winning games in scrims because teams just fall apart mm -hmm. and they don't try and come back the same way they do on stage. They don't play as safe as they do on stage. I do not trust in Vitality executing properly around Barons consistently over five games until I see it on stage. Yeah, I, I, that, that is a yeah, good yeah, point, the that, sure. I feel like and that's every happen. time Vitality is going to Nash, they are sweating for their lives. They, they are and praying even more on stage. Julius will actually smite it. And <laughs> this could act, and Broxa is actually really good at stealing Nash. I know <laughs> from experience. So, yeah. so <laughs> we're going to have this situation where I 100% agree Vitality will win the early game. I definitely think the Zuke and Gilius will be way better in the 2v2 mid. I think Cash might even be left alone. Like, I'm watching the Fnatic VODs, and they don't even know what a control ward is around mid. It is disgusting to watch. Caps, fun fact, buys the third least amount of wards out of any player in the EU LCS. You know who buys the second least? Reckless. <laughs> so yeah, that's actually, you yeah. Have, they you have absolutely <laughs> <Those> no defensive <laughs> vision in the early game, and that's why a lot of teams can take advantage of it. That's going to be a problem. Holy hell! But I, I got to stop you guys because like I, the statement was that Vitality would be the favorites. We were like, eh, and now you guys are ripping Fnatic Listen, apart. Fnatic will still win because <laughs> Vitality. After Soaz is not playing, I am even more hoping. It Vitality. hurts. <laughs> I agree, but Vitality, I don't think they will execute the late game properly. So unless they get such a huge lead that they can actually force a team fight and then take Baron after, then they won't snowball. How much can Fnatic be behind that 20 minutes uh, for them to lose the game? If they have Victor, Syria, kind of garbage, 10k. <laughs> 10k. Uh, we'll see. I have to be, I'm quite surprised because uh, in my head, when I thought about this statement, I would say it's more of a 50-50 odds right now, but you guys are definitely giving a lot of credit to Vitality Perks. Is this, are you thinking ahead? Are you thinking that you want to beat Gilius in the finals? Is that it? Uh, no, I think like for us, uh, it would be easier to play against Vitality than Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Still, I, I still rate Fnatic as a good team, right? But. There's just something about Vitality, Vitality Fnatic that I, it makes me think that Vitality would actually take them. Or Don't also, get too biased from scrims, though. You watch no, the no, 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 series. Yeah, yeah. Also, but also, like, yeah, they, they were never, they were like meh in the series, right? But they can step up in one week. And f how I see it is that Fnatic has choked in semifinals mm -hmm. last fair, year. Fair. And and it just makes me think that they will actually. Even the record said we have joy, we will not tilt. I actually think that Cups will alt up mentally if something happens bad in the game. Like, this is the worst from him, by the way, not from me. And uh, I think that it's just the mid jungle is going to have the edge in uh, reality. Very interesting. And I also think it's very interesting that after week nine, like the opinions across the board where Fnatic is the strongest and will have the upper hand in any matchup that comes their way. And I don't think it's particularly related to Buipo. It seems like it's different things that are surfacing here for you guys for Fnatic. They can, they can really struggle early game. Yeah. And Vitality have been... Probably Bulldozers. consistently the mm -hmm. best early game team, especially due to so the Zuka and in the second half of the split. Not by killing people, by taking turrets. All right. This is different. They are killing Caps, and then Caps is down, and okay. then they're going to go bot lane, they're going to try and kill Reckless, and then that's how they can snowball it. I My original prediction was 3-1 Fnatic. Yeah, they want to change it? With these changes, I'm going to do five games instead. I'm still going to say Fnatic will win, because I don't think Vitality will consistently win these late games, mm -hmm. as I said before. And there will be enough games where Caps and Reckless can be the big carries. So, Jankos, who wins tomorrow? Why? I think I go 3-1 for Fnatic, since I feel like Broxa in semis or overall when the games matter, I think sometimes he finds a good puffing, or maybe they all do it, but they cheese a lot. And I feel like Vitality will try to look for similar thing, uh, things, and I just don't see Vitality winning without early lead. I see Fnatic oh, losing, sure. yeah, but... So basically, if Fnatic, whenever it gets early lead, the mid jungle is kind of lost, and then Fnatic will just snowball probably. So that is why I feel like if Vitality doesn't get a good draft 
or good early game, they cannot win. Mm -hmm. that, that is my opinion. That unwavering trust in Fnatic. Perks, do you want to put it you on Vitality? You gotta go Vitality, man. I, I, I mean, with these words. I mean, with these words, like it feels like kind of I have to go, but I still think the Fnatic will win, right? <laughs> I, I, I think that Vitality has a really big chance of upsetting, but I think Fnatic will win, and I will just call it like 3-2 Fnatic. Would you love to play Fnatic in the final? Uh, or does I think it will be really, really hype, hype, yeah. Because we are supposed to meet them uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And Spring Spin, we got them in semis, and then they were like actually like they were like so bad, and then they came like they resurrected, and they're like they were so insane. They three zero HTK. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> they, <laughs> and they also yeah. they also like three zero like so demolished Misfits in third place match. So they were actually like they were probably deserving to be in the finals, right? Because I would I would like from my experience like Fnatic was a little better than Unicorns, right? Mm -hmm. But then in in summer split, I expected Fnatic to three zero Misfits, right? And then there was a Zack flying over in Cups' face. I don't know, there's something yep. with Zack and Cups, like it just doesn't work together. <laughs> and uh, the Misfits uh, just like played better, I guess, in them and won. So, yeah, I think 3 to Fnatic, but I have my doubts, right? Mm. Uh, it, with everything here, I'm even more hyped for uh, the semi final statement. than I was now. Yeah, good, thank you. I, uh... Keep in mind, by the way, the Vitality is full of rookies as well. But they so play a lot of U5s. They've been in like also promotion tournament, five games and so really? on. Like yeah. I, th I feel like you're almost more oh. nervous in a promo tournament than the semi-final of the LCS. Might be, might be. When though. you're in a BO5. Maybe, uh, maybe not, but they played BO5s at least. I don't know. I mean, for I I'd like to think that playing for now possible EU LCS title and the final maybe is going to give you cooler. some stress. But Gilius, oh, he definitely. stays cool, you know. He's going to... Wouldn't you give something to see Jankos and Gilius fight it out on the big stage? That would be really cool, by the way. That would be I, nice. I would prepare some banter and flame and everything throughout <laughs> the week to throw at each other. Nice. That would be really cool. And also, according to this, I think just Memento, when, when Rocket played against... Uh, who did Rocket play? Uh, play Spice. Spice. Okay, Rocket played Spice, right? I felt like Memento took too much on himself that he has to carry and he was not preferring well. And I think if Gilius or any other Vitality member thinks that they have to carry and they will try to step up their game, I think it will actually make their game just worse. I would say except for Jizuke. Just Fnatic will win. Like, come on, guys. Like, ah, I just can't believe it. All right. Well, we'll check back in but tomorrow. Fun. We'll see Actually, what I really want to see if wins only so he's wrong. Like, only so I, <laughs> I want to contradict him right now. I <laughs> turn off nameplate and I don't see Reckless and, and, and the Caps. Like, we need the, I mean, you mm -hmm. know, next to the champion. Maybe I would choose my mind, but. Also, yeah. want to add in in case Fnatic loses tomorrow, yes. Reckless will lose the Euphoria bet. Can you remind us? He will have to wear a hot dog costume on stage before the crowd shows up and film a video in front of the trophy, wishing Perks all the luck in the world and saying how happy he is for Perks that he can now win another title. If, however, Reckless wins, it's Drakers and myself in these hot dog costumes. Yeah, so I don't know what I'd like more, uh, yeah. to wear the tight costume. Would, Let's just sure leave that in the Reckless. middle. We already had the video to save the dog costume. costumes, so that was one thing. Uh, you, guys nice can, win a bit. you guys can catch up on that wager uh, if you listen to the Euphoria podcast right now on iTunes. SoundCloud now, YouTube, and YouTube. YouTube and the Euphoria podcast, you'll find it. So, uh, taking a bit of a break from Europe, my last shocking statement is uh, related to the upsets we saw over in North American playoffs with C9 and TSM getting knocked out and it is um, 100 Thieves coach Prolly is the only successful NA to EU transfer. I mean, that I'm really happy for Prolly by that. I love Prolly and yes. I still enjoyed playing with him or like I mean him coaching me I guess um, and even though we didn't have, have much success together and it seems like we have actually much more success like without each other. I still hope that a nice he will break just do well. I mean, he's, well, still, well, he's still in semi finals. Like he has to win the same. Yeah, exactly. But he's like in the against same place. The yeah, we have oh, Febben. Yeah. So Febben then, has been successful. Yeah. So this is where Febben as well. So this is where we find out what component of the old H2K yeah, was, was the trouble. <laughs> I know, Odo, it seems like Odo maybe. was actually the, like, the problem. It could <laughs> still today, be Yankov, sure. it could still be Prowley, it could still be Fabi, but Fabi is doing really, really well. Ryu is with Prowley, also yeah. part Prowley. of yeah. the old H2K as well. Also part of Hardstack fourth place, third yeah. place. <laughs> <laughs> honestly though, I think really is playing, uh, I mean, maybe not right now in NA because I don't watch much, much of 100 Thieves, but I always thought Ryu is really good and when I played with him, I enjoyed it a lot. He's a and boss. When I would look at Fabi and Ryu, I would say that Fabi would probably dominate the lane or like play better, like as a mechanical player, but I think Ryu is just so smart, like mm -hmm. so smart. 
So uh, when it comes to transfers and going as expected, for me, I think that um, Febben definitely surprised me. The way he's always been good, right? But I didn't expect him to be so dominating uh, over in NA perks. What do you? Oh, hmm. Do you want to jump in? Honestly, I think the team surprised me. Yeah. I think Febben played counter as expected. I think he was going to be consistently good in almost every game, which mm -hmm. he, which he was. But the fact that the team around him actually played well. Uh, that was the one that stood out for me, especially in the TSM series. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Like, I think Fabi played really well, like consistently, like Fisha said, but his team was there to step up and to actually do stuff. And he was just like the consistent player that he is. So it's very nice. I'm very happy for him to find success. As much as it sucks, it means that Sven and Viti lost, but... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, do you uh, do you talk to them or do you just like what's it like for you to knowing that you're so, such good friends with these guys and and this stuff is now happening? Uh, I I I was I was like when I had hard times during the split, I would like go and speak to Mitty on Skype in the like 3 a.m. 4 a.m. We would watch what's together, mm -hmm. watch our screams and my, my screams and they give me some feedback and uh, we would like watch what's on YouTube and then we would talk about the game and. Uh, I speak to Sven very often as well, and Trick as well. Mm -hmm. So I speak to all of them, yeah, basically. Yeah, you do. What's expect? I expect, I speak to him a bit, but he's like, uh, he's in another world. <laughs> 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 it's just expect. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm very close friends to them, and also I'm the last one standing. Yes, you and are. You're I'm holding the down final, the fort. I'm in the final, and they all lost. I like how this That's true. <laughs> We're going down yeah. such an emotional, sweet road, and then so you're yeah, like, I'm in the yeah, final, like, everyone else I'm lost. I'm the best. <laughs> Confirm that Mithy still, confer, uh, still coaches G2. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Nothing yeah, changed, Mithy really. Helped me, Mithy helped me improve, for sure. I, I, was, I was really, like, card stuck. All righty. Well, fantastic stuff. We also send the best for all our EU players that go over to NA, and we hope that they do well. And, I mean, it would be crazy if Febben won the trophy over there, or, or probably in Ryu. We I'm all called them EU, but actually <laughs> Ryu is Korean, and I, probably I, I, is I, North American. European That's whatever. Whatever. Kind of yeah. European. Yeah. Same we know at some point it's... Like just five European players on each team over in NA, five Europeans on each team over here, yeah, and then maybe a few Korean imports in there, and then we've taken over the world effectively. The magic except formula. Except for Korea and China. Alrighty, well, taking over the world one step at a time and one match at a time. Let's take a look at the bracket because we have another best of five on the books for us. This is what it looks like so far. So, oh my God. Um, is a. Uh, is there a surprise somewhere, or is anything? Is everything for you, Martin, going as expected so far? I think. Uh, Kind of goes as planned. I mean, I had H2K beating Vitality, which was close, but uh, so I guess that was one little surprise. I think 3 0 Rocket was the obvious one. Yep. Uh, 3 1, 3 2 for G2 in this series. You can take it. Both of them kind of work. Uh, so I think so far it makes a lot of sense, and I would say it makes the most sense if Fnatic makes the final. Mm -hmm. But with all the stuff we just discussed now, like I wouldn't be surprised if Vitality's in there. Well, what what have you seen of G2 in the last week and today, and with what we've just discussed in terms of the relative level of Fnatic and Vitality, do you see G2 Esports lifting their fifth trophy in a row? I think, first of all, with Weipo instead of Soas, it, it's a lot more likely. With Yanin playing a lot better in the bot lane, and with the team really understanding that carries for top lane is what you're looking for, I think uh, G2's chances went up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. I'm not going to call them the favorites yet to do it. I want to see how tomorrow uh, looks. Do you think you're the favorite? Uh, I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't think of myself as a favorite because before I would always think of myself as a favorite going into final. I expected myself to win every single final, but I really like the underdog um, mentality and the underdog, like, uh, how is it? Like, just the underdog, like, Underdog Say mindset, defined. right? Yeah. Like underdog mindset. No pressure. It's like when we went first split in the LCS, we didn't like, like everyone expected us to be like what six or something, like playoff, right? Mm -hmm. But we just went and we just like smacked everyone, I guess. And even in the final, like we just like holy, we smacked everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that was like that really like boosted my ego, right? And mm -hmm. my conf like my confidence. And then MSI happened. And then MSI happened, and I still had a high confidence <laughs> and maybe too high. Yeah. For, anyways, I really like the underdog mindset, and I think that. I really want my team to have it as well because for me, like I, I would have expected Fnatic to win the split, and they have to win the split if they ever want to win a split again. 
but I'm in this region, they have to win this split or they will not win it again. I love how you're Th building is, up the narrative. Like they really have to, right? Because they are together for one and a half year now and they are expected to win. Like let's like let's not move pressure from them. They are expected <laughs> to win. Right? I, lo I love how and, you're trying to push the there, narrative so you're we are the there, And I'm coming from my fifth title right now and they can't even stop me. Like they have no chance. So. Perks, you're not the way you're talking right <laughs> now, you're not the other the final, by the way. Yeah. Just run so that for the time. final. But uh, Perks, heavy is the head that wears the crown. You can't be the underdog if you're playing the way you are now. Now, and if you're seeing the nature of e and, and your G2 esports, and that's always going to be kind of... It's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. <laughs> you control everything. Yanko, so Yanko is the guy that is a total underdog that has to like break this curse of the horrible play in playoffs. Oh, yeah, Yanko is so happy for him. Like his first time in the final, he can just int now. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, I, mean, I can choke now. Like, I can choke now. You know, I can still do it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I feel really good that I'm in the finals, but it doesn't actually feel that super nice. I mean, when I won, I maybe I was thinking that I could not contain emotions, but I could, and I was like, yeah, we won, I'm happy now. But I just feel like we are just playing better. And right now, looking at it, I think we have a chance of winning. But like Lucas said, I felt like Fnatic clearly should take it and Bipo shouldn't basically stop them from it, you know? I think he is playing really well and they should be able to leave the trophy. So if they don't... I, I I kind of agree with him, <laughs> but I don't agree with him completely because I think that right now, from how Fnatic is performing, I would say, is they're not the favorites. But no, they are. I haven't still, seen them play no, yet. Like, they're still. Okay. I'm, I'm really like leaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're still the favorites, right? But I just think that they're, like, as you guys said, Jesus' chances went high up, like a lot higher so than what it was before. You're the favorite. No, 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 we are, not. We are the underdogs. <laughs> you are the underdogs. <laughs> Let's All right, we, we, are, go, we go into the final with two underdogs. underdogs. <laughs> two underdogs in the final. What if it's Vitality in the final? Are you still there the is underdogs? two underdogs yeah. in the final. Two underdogs. If Vitality... No, what if makes Vitality is in the final, like, I will win the final. I actually, okay. I will win the final whoever is in the final. I actually call it right now. I will win another final, like, it's already won. So there we go. What you just said about... Are no? we yeah, the now underdogs? Now you're not the underdogs, now you're the favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so now I just made us the favorites. So you just you would just went on this big talk about, you know, when I started, and I was confident, too confident, yeah. MSI, and I was like, we're just gonna win, no matter what happens. We are the underdogs, but the underdog we thought is so strong that we are gonna win, no matter what. <laughs> 3D chess, this uh, guy. Yeah. You, yeah, okay. you, I'm playing this game on another level. Cool, uh, another level for perks. We will see. In any case, there's still one match left to be played out here in the semifinals before we pack up and head to Denmark tomorrow between Fnatic and Vitality. We've talked about it enough already, but you guys mark your calendars because tomorrow it starts at 5 p.m. Central European Summertime. That is 8 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And for tonight, there is a lot more League of Legends coming your way. At the stroke of midnight, it is the NA Academy Finals between FlyQuest Academy and Echo Fox Academy. So just keep watching League of Legends all night long. Thank you guys very much for joining me. We'll see you in Copenhagen in the final. Good stuff. That was weird. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All we'll right, see cool. you there. Thank you guys Thank you. for having me here and my, my bro Jankos and... Do you want to read it? He did, he did it. Talk, even though he did before, as of like me jangle thingy. No, you carried so today. I, he was your dog. Yeah, yeah. he was actually. He literally just waited yeah. to admit. Really yeah, I just yeah, waited yeah. for my team to yeah. carry. It feels so nice. Uh, Perks, we already <laughs> said who is the best play-by-play -play player, uh, pro player who is a play-by-play -play caster. You now can read this and close the show for us today. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. But for us, it's time to call it a night. And thank you all for joining us. Like it's been a lovely day today. G2 won again. And we are really excited for our semi-final clash tomorrow between Fnatic and Vitality. <laughs> and make sure to tune in and good night! <laughs> Even went off prompt, I love Fantastic. it. Fantastic! Yeah. The real talent. Speaking from her heart. <laughs> <laughs>